So Bill, I come across on Instagram an article that you wrote about the 100 mile circle here in California. And so this is pretty awesome that you and I get to meet in person and, and talk about that. Yeah, yeah. It, your, your background, likewise, uh, one of the creators of My Job Depends on Ag is uh, pretty amazing. Glad we have the chance to spend a little yeah. bit of time together. And the fact that you have been making your living in the 100 mile circle for some time, it's great to get to know you a little bit better. We kind of are all on the same page as, as far as trying to um, get the public to understand the, the importance of having uh, national security reasons and supply chain issues a homegrown food supply and there's this location is just uh, I mean if X marks the spot on place to do it this is it yeah yeah the, the, the home security topic has become a lot more important over the past you know couple years first we have COVID and there are certain countries that restricted exports and now we have the Russian Ukraine war with commodity prices spiking and a lot of countries looking inward, it's become an extremely important topic. And I, I don't know if you're seeing it in your business, in your community as well. Oh, absolutely. The, um, the supply chain issues hit us hard, even last year during COVID, but also it just brought to light. We need to re-examine the importance of having not only your homegrown food supply, but the supporting industries here at home, your fertilizer manufacturing, you know, um, uh, the, the stuff that makes things grow. Uh, we've offshored a lot of that, depending on a lot of uh, countries for those supplies. And um, the question is ask why, why can't we do those things here? And if, if we don't have those resources, that's understandable, but we do have those resources. And I think there should just be some re-examination. Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, insuring and protecting agribusiness for over 40 years. By Gar Bennett, the Central Valley's growing experts. More yield, less water, proven results. We help growers feed the world. By Brandt Professional Agriculture, proudly discovering, manufacturing, and supplying the ag inputs that support the heroes who work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley agriculture connected since 2003. By Hodges Electric, proudly serving the Central Valley since 1979. By Pickett Solar, helping farmers and ranchers save money by becoming energy independent. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for over 50 years, proudly featuring Coleman products, dedicated to supporting agriculture and the families that grow food for a nation. When you wrote that article, um, has, a re has it, what, in your opinion, what has the response been about the perception of, of agriculture and the importance? Is it, you know, the supply chain issues and the price of food? You think people are re-examining and paying closer attention to where their food comes from? At the time that we wrote it, it was more of an observation of looking at Bakersfield, Fresno, Modesto, Salinas, and those communities look at themselves as individual communities and we looked at it as the most unique growing region in the world and we had the data to back it up so at the time that we wrote it it was less about the security of the u.s as it related to events at that time just a general observation that it's only a matter of time before something happens based on you know the history of um you know wars pandemics strife so after COVID hit and people started looking countrywide a little more inward and at their own food security, there was a lot more attention brought to this region and people questioning, well, what if? What if COVID was a lot worse? And, and most people believe that it's only a matter of time before there's the next pandemic. How do countries react? Yeah. And then with the war that's going on, it's actually accelerated that and you're really seeing it on a global basis now. 
And this is not just anecdotal. So Larry Fink, who's the founder of BlackRock, they're one of the largest money managers in the world. They manage $10 trillion. In his public statement just recently, he said that after 30 years of globalization, he's seen a reverse. So you're seeing more populism, you're seeing more people globally focused on how do they survive in the case of a global war or a major pandemic, and can you feed your people? And if the answer is no, then a lot of countries right now are looking inward saying, how do we solve that just in case? And we have this national treasure here in the 100-mile circle, which solves that for the entire United States, but it's not being addressed. So yes, people are now looking at this region saying, we need to give it more attention. We need to give it the resources it needs to feed this country because it's only a matter of time before something bad or worse happens relative to what we've gone through over the past couple of years. Well, my husband has passed away, but we've been in the cattle business. I still have um, all the ranches and I rent the land out for, for livestock. Uh, we've lived, I've lived here since 1961, um, 60 years. When we moved out here, um, the water table was at 40 feet. Today, I believe, I'd have to look at my notes, but I think it's at 255 feet. Two years ago, it was 230 feet. It's dropped like 35 feet in two, year, two years' time, which was alarming. So 30 years ago, they uh, started planting trees out here. And right over here was the first orchard that went in. and. Uh, that man just didn't have enough water for trees. He was kind of experimenting. So he sold to a, a doctor down in Los Angeles who had it for, for a few more years. Then some more big investment company came in and bought from him. And um, then they started planting the trees. And it's just been one orchard after another. It's a way of life and you just don't want to give that up, you know. Um, you might, <laughs> that's, it's, it's hard to explain. Well, it's, you know what though, it's, it's, it's less difficult for people to understand when you think, if they actually come out onto these ranches well, and spend some time. Well, a lot of people just would hate it. You know, some people, this isn't for everybody. You know, some people would think, oh my gosh, this is just what I just, I'd hate to be stuck way out there. And of course, I've been asked that myself, you know, are you going to stay on the ranch? <laughs> but I don't want to, I don't want to leave. It's the other day, um, I had a conversation, just it thought that crossed my mind. And here we are in California. And it, it feels like if you backtrack to when JFK was president, that the United States was looking across the map of our own country and saying to itself, what can we do to ensure food security, national security, and what what things can we build to secure this? And, and he was instrumental at, at building the California Aqueduct and at bolstering California's waters. We bolstered it, we improved it. And climate climate change has changed some of our ability to store water, but it, it shouldn't change our intelligence to overcome some of these obstacles. We California has plenty of water if it's if we if we think wisely and, and, and manage the resource in a more precise manner. But even then, even then imagine a, I said this kind of sarcastically, imagine a, a, a tree or a plant that produces a very dense form of protein. It does not require refrigeration, which is enormous cost as far as energy, can be stored for long periods of time. And at the same time, it's storing climate changing carbon out of the atmosphere. You would think with that and the, the precarious situation we are in with climate change, that our government would, in a, want trees planted all throughout the San Joaquin Valley floor yeah. if, in fact, you get dense form plant-based, you know, protein and you're storing the carbon. And it's weird that there's not a word about that from people who are in the situation to make those changes possible. It's like dead radio silence. And another thing that that's, I find disappointing is that the resourcefulness, the ingenuity, and the venture capital in this country is unlike anywhere in the world. And the free markets right now are starting to address the issue that our food supply chain needs to be enhanced. 
and by uh, we 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 have identified about a thousand companies in North America that are focused on ag tech as we refer to it, but it's technology being developed to improve the food supply chain, use fewer resources, have a greater productivity, lower cost, and these are the free markets coming up with a solution. And it appears that people don't believe that farmers can be able to fight through global warming. So global warming appears that in the Earth has increased one degree C over the past hundred years, and the general belief is going to increase. But over the past hundred years, farmers have produced more with less, addressing a growing population, addressing and facing global warming. And you know, you look at the history of the Dust Bowl and other challenges they face. Yeah. They, they've always fought through it. And even if the temperature of the earth increases one degree C in the next 50 years, the next 20 years, farmers are going to figure out a way, in particular with the amount of capital that's going into space right now through ag tech. And to think that the solution is industrial farming and, and you know, bringing everything indoors, once again, it's, it's not going to work. The solution is free sun, yeah. more class one soil than anywhere in the world, best microclimates, smartest farmers in the world. It's the 100 mile circle. So this area really needs to be reinvigorated. And I, I do believe that the byproduct of COVID and the unfortunate war with Russia and Ukraine is that people are starting to recognize that they need, we need to have a food supply within this country that is trustworthy and we can count on in good times and bad because during periods of prosperity, people forget the yeah, fact absolutely. that yeah. that that yeah. this treasure yeah. is here. Yeah. And now that we face challenging times, a lot of people are questioning, where can we get our food and what can we do to lower food costs? And it's right in our backyard. It's right in the Central Valley of California. Well, with Sigma and all these other regulations and inflation and now price volatility when it comes to crops, it's the next 20 years is going to be a big turning point. Uh, I mean, I believe that over the next 20 to 20 years, we're going to continue to see the trend of family farms shrinking. This is the number of them, how we've been seeing the last 20, 30 years. And it's going to be maybe mostly be all these uh, investments, uh, firms coming in, insurance groups coming in. Uh, all endowment funds and they're going to be buying up more and more acreage and you'll be left with some big either managing companies or family farm managing companies who will be controlling all these farms and it'll be more of a commercial type of farming compared to how it used to be the family farm where you can go down the street and then you keep running to farmer john over here and farmer joe over there that's going to be sadly a thing of the past Well, the thing is, when these guys make decisions on crops, they make them all on a spreadsheet. They don't really think of the long term in five, 10 years. So for some farmers, yeah, they know that, hey, for the next two, three years, we might be taking a loss on this certain crop, but you know, they understand that they need to continue to grow it because for multiple reasons, but if you have all these East Coast people making decisions, they're gonna be like, well, hey, almonds look good, let's go all in almonds, or let's go all in pistachios, or vice versa, they might be going, hey, almonds look bad right now, we think it might be bad for the next few years, let's tear them all out, vice versa. So that's what it's gonna be, it's a lot more uh, reactionary and, and short-term thinking compared to how farmers have always been long-term, and they understand that, hey, with farming comes ups and downs and the volatility, but you gotta stay through it and take the punches to survive through it. If global warming is man-made, and it appears that it is, then the right thing that we should do as a society is control the production because we have the most efficient production here, we have the best technology, and we have the lowest carbon footprint, as opposed to outsourcing it to another country where they don't have the same regulation. So we should, for the benefit of our own food supply and for controlling global warming, have it in the Central Valley, provide the water that's needed, and actually work with environmentalists to make sure that what we're doing is the most efficient, lowest carbon emission farming in the world, and we're already headed there. And if you look at farming production and standards in other countries, it's not. And on top of that, if you look at some of the fruit that we import, the latest FDA study shows that 
when they do their random study that imports tested nine times higher for pesticides than domestically produced fruit. So not only is it produced less efficiently, efficiently they, they don't have the same standards, they don't have the same regulation, and the stuff that we're eating arguably has more poison on it. Yeah. I've often said to myself in frustration that virtue signaling is not a public policy that we should <laughs> that we should enforce. But what I mean by that, what I mean by that is yeah. the general public likes to see I want this, I want this, you guys need to do X, Y, and Z because it's good for the environment, it's good. But the thing is when a good part of the popula population, when they go into the grocery store, when they see, I grow cantaloupes and honeydews, when they see this fruit, there's no story there. They don't yeah. They don't see it. They're looking price. Yeah. And at that time, all that stuff goes out the window about who grew it and how it was grown uh, in a lot of cases. And this is the, this is the, the story I want to ask my California citizens and the rest of the country. You want these things then it's not virtue signaling that will get it, get it done, it's action that will get it done. And that means understanding that homegrown food can accomplish the goals that you desire yeah. for your climate. Offshoring it and pretending that I'm gonna buy this and this and that, and you're, you're, you, you want us to be involved in it, in changing, then you gotta be in, engaged with it as well. Or yeah. it can't work because the, 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 the grocery change and stuff like that, for now, they pick up the phone, say, hey, what does a box of California cantaloupes cost? What does a box of cantaloupes cost somewhere else in the world? And for them, it's buy low, sell high. Yeah. Because, right? Yeah. And, that's, and so if they can get it for cheaper in stock, that's, we lose shelf space. Yeah. But that's a conversation that I, I, I want people to examine. We, we, I, I don't, we can accomplish these things, yeah. but there needs to be a discussion there uh, about what that really means. It's yeah. not, not just words. Farming is in our blood. It goes back probably four or five generations. I had uh, my father's side of the family uh, came here from Tennessee in the in the 1930s and my grandpa started in the grain business uh, in eastern Madera County. Uh, my mom's side of the family where we're here at today uh, is from the Kerman area and Dinuba area and uh, my grandparents moved to Madera in the mid 50s and and uh, that's how we ended up in Madera. I've been, I'm the third generation to farm this ranch with my son Mason uh, out here uh, being the fourth and so I just kind of I've been around almonds my whole life we've been in the almond industry since well before I was born and so it's really the only thing I've ever grown we've had some grapes for a while but uh, almonds are kind of in our blood it's we've been doing it since the 60s California political landscape has changed dramatically in the last 30 years. Um, I've told my son here recently, I said, you know, when I was when I was his age, the, the big players in agriculture, the, the big boys out on the west side, the Harrises and the Wolfs and the, and the Giffins, you know, all the politicians knew them and, and, res and respected them and it was a it was a two-way street and and now I feel like even the biggest of farmers can't pick up the phone and call Sacramento or call Washington. But, you know, 30 years ago, there was that connection because they cared about California agriculture and, and things have shifted with the tech technology money that's come into the Bay Area. And, you know, we kind of feel like we're just in no man's land out here. And it, and it shows with our water policies that we get not only from the state and the feds, but, um, you know, it, it's I feel like we're getting it from every direction and that farming is this this um, this entity that that's doing more harm than good when in fact the economy in California everything is based around agriculture or it was and it, and it is shifting a little bit but the the tax money that flows through agriculture to this state and to the nation is is unbelievable and when you take that away then they're going to really realize what California agriculture provides Oftentimes, you know, when I pick up a newspaper and I'm, I'm reading about, you know, and it's, it's, it's coming from a, you know, someone that's far removed from 
where we are. And they write an article about our water use or, or what we're doing and, and the San Joaquin Valley doesn't, you know, they just, they just, you just get the feeling that they're sentiment that we're only 2% of the economy as they claim in California. So if we were to see it disappear, it would probably have a meaningless effect on, on our average, on our life. And that's, that's kind of what the implied, um, they imply when they write these stories. And so, but it's really weird to hear that and then you go home and you turn on the Discovery Channel and you're talking about, you know, what happened if we polluted our planet so badly we'd have to go find another home for it. And NASA finds a sister planet like ours and they find a small sliver of landmass that could feed, you know, the coming populations for centuries. Yeah. Would they make, what would they do with that resource? Would they say, nah, let's, let's not utilize it. And that's kind of like the sentiment, it's like, duh, a moment, like we have this resource and why can't the most wealthy nation on the planet with the smartest farmers and the s smartest businesses out there yeah. show the planet how you do both? Yeah, that's right. How do you do both? Yeah. Grow food, environmentally sound, and show the world how we can do it. And that's, that's, what, that's where the coming together needs to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And, and if you look at the process going on, on right now, there's political challenges being placed on the Central Valley for food production. You know, the, the cost of regulation, the, the mandated cost of labor, the shutting off of water, not building enough water storage, and the general belief is that this production will be picked up elsewhere, either controlled environment ag or another country. And you, using your, your spaceship analogy, if you look at Elon Musk does, right, he launches rockets mm -hmm. and it goes up comes down, blows up, and through trial and error, he figures it out. We don't have the luxury of trial and error here because if this area is shut down and turned into a dust bowl and the infrastructure goes away and the talent goes away, at the point in time when we're gonna need it the most, next pandemic, next major war, turning that back on is not like turning an oil well on. Yeah. It, it'll take a decade of getting the right people, getting the right infrastructure in place so we could produce our food here. Yeah. We don't have the luxury of trial and error. We need to get it right now. Well, I sure hope that um, people who ever watch this share this and, and, and understand that, you know, um, someone like me, if, if I fail at this venture of farming, um, I'll, I'll still survive. I'll still make my way, but I, it's not about me. It's, 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 it's about the, the common sense thing about having stability in your country and having uh, uh, the opportunity, you know, food, people don't realize with, when, when food prices are cheap and abundant, then the, the, the explosion of creativity and yep. everything that makes our country great is there. Right? And it's yep. just been self-evident in any country that's had problems with food yep. and a high price. You know, they're not the ones sending people to Mars. Yeah, that's They're right. trying to, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're not yeah. the ones that are, you know, making these fantastic Tesla automobiles either. They're not yeah. coming from those places. Yeah, yeah, and, and you look at the people who are making these decisions, they are wealthy individuals. You think about the people that are contributing to their campaigns, they are wealthy people. Mm -hmm. But you look who's suffering the most right now is the people living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. So food escalation prices, energy yeah. prices, yes. and the people that are suffering the most don't have a voice. Yeah. And the solution is we're going to send ag production to another country. If I'm in a hole and I can't get out, what do I do? First thing I do is I quit digging. And that's, I think, how, how well this describes that. One of the United States' biggest strengths is the ability to feed itself. Not many other countries in the entire world at our scale uh, economically can say the same thing, especially with COVID really showing how fragile supply chains are. I mean, people were upset so much just over not getting their Pelotons on time. Just imagine if you had to go to your grocery store and you couldn't get bread um, or milk. And luckily for us in the United States and more specifically California, we grow almost everything right here. You know, if they want to be informed, there's plenty of resources here in the Valley in Agriculture. You know, call somebody up, call a Farm Bureau up, or, or call an ag advocate group, and 
farmers are more than happy to give tours to people and show them what we do. We're not trying to hide anything out here. Um, we're, we're stewards of this land and it's and it's our land and we want it, we want to do what's best for it. And, you know, we see that you read something and you just assume it's true um, without doing any research on it. And we're all guilty of it, uh, but it seems like it spreads like wildfire in, in the big cities that once they hear something negative, it just, you know, it, it, that becomes gospel and they, and they believe it's the truth. All right, man, safe travel yeah. back back home and great to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Good All day. right. Catch you. Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, insuring and protecting agribusiness for over 40 years. By Gar Bennett, the Central Valley's growing experts. More yield, less water, proven results. We help growers feed the world. By Brandt Professional Agriculture, proudly discovering, manufacturing, and supplying the ag inputs that support the heroes who work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley agriculture connected since 2003. By Hodges Electric, proudly serving the Central Valley since 1979. By Pickett Solar, helping farmers and ranchers save money by becoming energy independent. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for over 50 years, proudly featuring Coleman products, dedicated to supporting agriculture and the families that grow food for a nation.